the Institute for the Study of Peak States presents the 5th International Psychoimmunology and Psychobiology Research Symposium. In this presentation, a case study, Traumatic Brain Injury Treatment Using Psychoimmunology, by Shane McKenzie, CEO. Okay, so the next uh, presentation I'm going to do, which uh, is a uh, case studies or a number of case studies around um, traumatic brain injury. Uh, so let me just pull up the presentation. So my name is Shane McKenzie. I'm the, the CEO of the Institute for the Study of Peak States. Yeah, so I'm going to talk about uh, case studies in traumatic brain injury uh, treatment using our psychomunology um, approach. So let's first start with, so what is a traumatic brain injury? So a, a TBI occurs when there's some kind of sudden trauma that causes some damage to the brain. So you've got hit to the head. Uh, some of the main causes uh, include falls. Uh, so just falling over and uh, landing on your head, particularly kind of landing backwards, but you know, anything that calls, uh, uh, results in a, a hit to the head. Uh, motor vehicle accidents, uh, common causes, sports injuries. Uh, so more and more as there's greater education around the impact of uh, concussions and traumatic brain injuries in sports, we're actually starting to see uh, professional athletes uh, being medically retired uh, because of uh, constant incidents and not recovering uh, from the, the symptoms uh, that they've, they've had after a TBIs uh, or a physical assault. They, they're some of the main causes. So TBIs are split up into three uh, categories and it depends on kind of for how long uh, you were um, kind of out where you had amnesia, memory loss. Uh, so for a mild TBI or concussion, oh, there was no uh, memory loss, no amnesia, uh, you know, just concussed for a, a few seconds or minutes uh, or it was less than uh, a day, uh, less than an hour, sorry. Mild, uh, moderate TBIs, uh, one hour to 24 hours, you've had uh, some memory loss after the, the TBI uh, or um, you know, being concussed for that period of time. Uh, and then severe TBIs is you know, you've had the memory loss for more than um, a day. Some of the symptoms that you might get from a, a TBI, uh, as you can see, there's lots of different things uh, that, it, that could be happening. Headaches are very common uh, symptoms, particularly when we get into the, the, uh, the, the chronic uh, symptoms as well, but you can feel tired. There can be sensory issues around sensitivity to light or sound. Uh, cognitive issues are also very common around, you know, you don't have the, uh, the cognition you had before or the difficulty concentrating or making decisions. Uh, emotional upsets are now all of a sudden uh, you get a lot easier uh, agitated uh, or behavioral problems. So you can become uh, much more impulsive in, in your behaviors, uh, have outbursts that you wouldn't have had before. So when it comes to, so there, some of those are gonna be acute symptoms. They, they happen immediately with the majority of people who have had a TBI, they actually, uh, those symptoms resolve uh, completely. Uh, for a while there, the, the, the belief was that, you know, within a week to no more than three months, pretty much uh, all of the symptoms are going to uh, get resolved. It's just a matter of giving the body time um, to repair. But there's been more and more research uh, on the long-term impact uh, of TBIs. And so one of these studies uh, demonstrated that uh, approximately half of the individuals uh, uh, after a TBI still had some long-term cognitive uh, impairment. So the chronic, some of the chronic symptoms, it's really obvious that you've still got chronic symptoms, but there's probably uh, uh, another group of chronic uh, symptoms that uh, are long-term, uh, but are not quite as easy to recognize uh, that it hasn't fully recovered. You've, you've definitely improved, but you haven't got back to the level that you were before. So the, the root cause of chronic TBI symptoms, you would uh, guess that it was probably due to the severity of the TBI. You know, if you had a mild one, you'd expect to recover 
uh, easily, whereas you had a severe one, then it's much more likely. But in fact, that's not, the, not necessarily the case. So there are some people who have just a mild uh, TBI, yet they end up with chronic symptoms. Uh, most people who have had a mild TBI or moderate TBIs do, uh, don't have any uh, chronic symptoms. And even people who have had a severe TBI can fully uh, resolve their symptoms um, uh, just you know, by giving the, um, having rest and you know, waiting until their uh, brain repairs itself. So it's clearly not to do, so if it's not to do with the severity of the TBI, then what is uh, causing the issue? So the research um, that we did, uh, our uh, hypothesis was that it was to do with the brain's ability to repair itself. So how resilient um, is the brain? Uh, and so then we were looking for, well, what things could be blocking the, the brain's ability to repair itself? And we identified that there are two subcellular fungi that actually block the brain's ability uh, to repair itself. So if, if these fungi are actually present, then uh, it's much more likely then to have uh, chronic symptoms after a TBI. Whereas if the fungi are absent, then you're actually gonna, uh, your brain's gonna repair itself and the, the TBI symptoms uh, will disappear. So our PI, our psychoimmunology approach for TBI eliminates uh, the subcellular fungi. Uh, so th the reason there's a need for this is, you know, the current approach for chronic TBI symptoms, you know, getting kind of physical therapy or, you know, cognitive therapy, you know, yeah, trying to improve the, the symptom, the, the capabilities that you had that have been reduced, trying to, I guess, exercise those to kind of get their function um, back over time. So sometimes that definitely improves uh, and sometimes it actually does fully resolve with that, uh, but, but you're actually kind of, a, um, yeah, the, this approach doesn't necessarily work for everyone. The other approach is kind of just managing the symptoms, kind of got to the point where it's like, we've done the best we can with all the therapies that we've got that, that we're aware of. Uh, and so this is now a, an, a, an ability loss that you're just gonna have to cope with. And so then you might need to change the environment uh, to manage the fact that they've now got these uh, chronic symptoms, uh, depending on you know, what they are, if they're more kind of physical um, in nature. Whereas our psychoimmunology um, protocols actually eliminate uh, the pathogens that are blocking the full um, brain repair. So we're getting to the root cause of why the brain hasn't uh, repaired itself uh, and therefore improving the resiliency of the brain. So regardless of what kind of... Um, uh, TBI um, we have, we're actually going to uh, eliminate those symptoms. Uh, and similar to um, the, the previous presentation talking about you know, how long the total um, session time, so there's, there's always going to be a minimum of three, but there's actually quite a, a number of steps to the TBI process. So it'd be more than three um, sessions, uh, but you know, probably four or five um, sessions to, to go through all the steps and including the couple of follow-up sessions to make sure that it's stable. So we're only talking a few hours of treatment time. And the, the clients uh, that we've tested with so far, the research clients we've tested with so far, their symptoms are disappearing in the session. So they're already noticing you know, just at the end of a session uh, that the symptoms are already gone. And then obviously they'll go out and kind of, uh, live their life to actually see that it's stable and you know, the kind of situations that might have triggered those uh, chronic TBI symptoms, whether that's actually permanently changed. So let me give you a, a, a quick overview of one of our uh, research uh, clients. So her name's Anna. So she had her TBI included you know, a, a hit to the back of the head. So her acute symptoms, uh, so she was vomiting, uh, her speech was no longer clear, she was mixing up her words. Uh, so the, the speech was um, uh, not as coherent as it normally is. She had headaches. Uh, she had some testing that um, she felt like her left arm and, and leg weren't were slower than her right arm and leg. And they also felt weaker. And she had some testing um, uh, around that. Her brain felt like it was squeezed, like there wasn't enough room uh, in her skull uh, for her brain. And she felt extremely tired. She did actually, it was uh, feeling tired was something that was actually um, something that was ongoing for her. 
But now after the TBI, that level of tiredness was extreme. So it was a, a lot more than it was. The chronic symptoms, so the vomiting only lasted a few days. Uh, so that disappeared. The headache now was, was now the, the main chronic uh, symptom that she had. Uh, the speaking improved, but it still wasn't back to, to normal. Uh, the left uh, leg and arm still felt like they were uh, slower. Um, you know, to, when she would uh, walk, she'd notice that it just felt like they, were, they weren't keeping up with the right side and her brain still felt squeezed. Uh, so we, we did um, some sessions uh, and after you know, going through the, the TBI process, her headaches completely gone, uh, the brain squeezing's uh, gone, uh, so she, after one of the, uh, it wasn't the first session, after the, the second session, she actually felt like her brain was, was rebuilding, which is actually one of our markers that the process is actually um, complete. So she independently um, said that without me actually asking whether she was observing that. So that was a good sign. Uh, she used to wear uh, glasses for some situations like screen time or um, sunlight and those sort of things. She no longer needs to wear the glasses. Now that was actually even better than expected. That wasn't something we were monitoring. It was just something that she noticed uh, she no longer needed. Uh, again, another symptom we weren't necessarily monitoring, but she noticed the change that there was some anxiety that she was experiencing that now has disappeared. Uh, another one, again, we weren't necessarily monitoring was she had some sinus symptoms. You know, she felt like she was blocked and that disappeared as well. Uh, so overall, she just felt like it was a lot easier for her to breathe, uh, which actually is one of the things uh, that uh, is a common uh, measure after the process. It, internally, it does kind of feel like it's just easier to breathe now. And she definitely had a lot more um, energy. She wasn't feeling that tiredness that she had before. Uh, and she shared with me in uh, one of the follow-up sessions, uh, we weren't um, planning this, but you know, she'd been uh, getting... Uh, you know, medical treatment and you know, checking for that. And so she had an MRI, which showed some kind of issues with the main vein. So uh, the doctor was saying it's, it looks like the, the blood's not pumping properly um, to your brain, not getting enough um, blood pumping there. So she got a referral to a neurologist to get an ultrasound uh, to check it in more detail. Uh, now she said, I don't know whether it's related to the TBI. It could be something that you're actually born with. Um, so, but it's worthwhile checking out. She went and got the ultrasound and the results for, uh, from that, the doctor said, there's no issue there at all. Uh, the, the blood's pumping really well. So you know, it looks like uh, th there's a good chance that the TBI treatment actually helped um, with that as well. So that was pretty amazing. Okay. Um, so it's always great, you know, to me telling the story, it's actually even better if we hear it from her. So I've just got a, a two minute audio of her sharing uh, some of that feedback. Okay, Anna. So we've done a couple of sessions so far. How has it been since the last session we did? Yes. Yeah, so uh, I think that the last two sessions uh, were somehow um, changing my brain and fixing it totally. First of all, I am not wearing glasses, and I had uh, uh, eye problems quite not big, but I needed to wear glasses. I could not look on the screens, I could not look on the sun, or uh, during the sunny days I had big headaches, so I was wearing glasses like um, ongoing, not uh, only for reading. So this is first. Since our first session, I am not wearing glasses anymore. For me, it's wow. Yeah. But I bought myself new glasses recently, so. <laughs> so <laughs> this is, yes. <laughs> uh, so this is one. And second, uh, I had uh, magnetic resonance after this uh, brain concussion, which I had. Mm -hmm. And my neurologist saw that I have some problems with here, the main veins. And she told me that she doesn't know if this is from the birth uh, mm -hmm. or uh, happened during the, this accident. Mm -hmm. So she sent me for ultrasonogram mm -hmm. to check it uh, more deeply. And I made it on Friday. And the doctor told me that whatever there was, it's gone. It's not there now. That's awesome. Yes. Pretty cool. Okay, so, so that's one uh, of our case studies. Uh, and we have another one of our research uh, clients here as well. Uh, Life, you want to come and join me?
There we go. Welcome, uh, Life. So Life is a part of our applied research team. So you're going to hear from him. Uh, I might be hearing from him later on. But just around TBI, you want to share your story around fairly recently, you had a, uh, a traumatic brain injury. Uh, I don't know if you brought the photo with you to show just how bad it was. Uh, <laughs> and then what your experience was after uh, going through our psychomonology process for TBI. Yeah. Can you please uh, allow to share a screen for me? Yes, I can do that. Okay, so here is. So, actually, I was uh, cleaning up outside after a um, storm we had here in in January. Um, so I was looking like this. Um, this picture is taken like uh, four hours after uh, my my injury. Uh, I get some something falling down in my my head, and there's uh, like a two three inch deep and was uh, close to to my skull. Uh, so when I was cleaning it up and and doing like this, I can actually see my skull. Um, I was not passing up. <clears throat> passing out uh, when when doing this but i have this like a uh, flick of a second where i have oh shit uh, what is happening here um and quite quite immediately i i felt that uh like my 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 head or my brain was was swollen um but like there was not um enough space between my my skull and uh, my brain this, this this little fluid we have in there so it was just uh, too much uh, pressure uh like the 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 uh, too much fluid or pressing from the skull and into my brain it was not a nice place like you know if you have a a too little uh, shirt or too small trousers uh, on. That was my sensation for my brain, um, and I could also like feel my my brain was getting more more grayish or more darker, more shadowy, or like we have a cloudy day. <clears throat> uh, I have been um, having migraine for for many many years. Uh, but this headache was was different, um, and it was not so so heavy. I'm used to a lot of pain, so there was not the pain that was uh, the the main issue. But I was also uh, during the day and the next days uh, much more tired and just want to go to sleep. Um, it was my my natural response. If I could just sit somewhere, then then I just doze off. Um, um also over the next uh, days i get the uh, symptoms when my eye was looking at uh, at the phone or pc that's not primary cell that's a computer in this case uh just for a few minutes so if i have to look for a message from my mom or you know what small stuff it was getting this symptom of getting more tired i getting more uh, headaches uh, like it was not really good for me to to be on the screen on the screen uh, also the television so it's not matter of which kind of screen it was and and then i noticed my my ordinary function was was very slow uh, like i was slowing down walking uh, a bit slow motion uh, it was funny because i was not feeling stupid uh, or, or lost brain capacity this way was just going slower uh, like I have a slow brain or battery was taking out the full brain so so that was um, uh, for me a funny funny sensation um, of course when you're coming in with the injury for uh, first we have to go to the local doctor here in Denmark we have a system for that uh, for small injuries and I was coming there like uh, five ten minutes for for closing hours, so I have to to run on for the uh, for the hospital to to fix me up. So so I have some hours um, where where I was just waiting, and and there I start to to do my my ordinary healing, uh, simple wholehearted healing. What was uh, 
the emotion at the time, uh, relooping, healing, small stuff, my emotion, what was going on on the day, all that kind of stuff. And and of course that that helped me, uh, but I still have uh, the minority of the symptoms. Uh, then I did uh, the the old uh, older. Uh, it's not like old, but it's, I think that's five years old uh, from the psychobiology TBI uh, process. Uh, and of course, I did that um, uh, three times. And and during that process, I, I also recalled uh, other brain injury I have a little bit over thirty years ago. And and was able to to heal that. So so I really felt uh, improvement. But you know I'm not back to zero thoughts uh, on on all my my symptoms. So so I talked with Kirsten and Grant about how far they were with this new approach with the psychoemology, uh, and and we start to to do that and. Uh, Shane explained there are, there, are, there are more things to heal and, and more steps to go. So for me, it was really like step by step. I felt like one symptom was going here and another symptom was was going there. And of course, with the, with the loop of uh, doing that three times, um, I, I really uh, improved. And, and And it was like, you know, you're sitting here. It, it's, it's like you you you're taking a splinter out of your finger, and and you know it's still in there. It still hurts. I have a little bit of symptoms here, but when it's out, it's out. So it's from one minute to another, then all the symptoms are gone, and that's quite uh, amazing. In uh, in top of that. I also felt uh, brighter and lighter in my head, uh, also even more space uh, and more space than before the injury. That could also be because I have this older injury for 30 years ago, but that was really like, you know, I have space in my house. I re uh, get rid of a lot of you know, clutter or whatever. And so that was really, really a, a nice uh, sensation for me. Um, some other side effects, if you can say so, uh, also as um, Shane was was mentioned, there was I was able to breathe more freely. Uh, I get more space, not only in my my brain and my skull, but also in my chest. Uh, and it seems like the membrane around my brain is more uh, more flexible. Um, I have a sensation of I'm more uh, strong uh, and solid, uh, not only in my brain, but in my, my, my whole body. Um, so, so for my understanding, that was, you, you know, the brain is going down from, from the spine as well. And, and, and that was also getting healed of this uh, process. So everything is good and uh, back to life and back to ordinary day. And uh, a month after, I was actually helping a neighbor with with a little project, and I was in his crawl space. And you know, I'm not used to be there, uh, obvious reason. So I bumped my head uh, one more time, exactly the same place, and I said, "Oh shit!" Uh, not one more time. Um, but you know. I was preparing to call up the team and we need to redo this process, but actually there was no setback. There was no symptoms at all. Of course, I have a pain like, you know, you put your fingers on the stove and you burn your fingers and you take them away. So I have a little bit of pain, but but you that went away like a minute or two after. And there was a little bit of still hole out of blood and stuff, but there was no symptoms, no setback whatsoever. And that is, yeah, now four months ago, we finished up the, the healing and nothing, nada. Uh, completely free of the symptoms. And I still have this other side effect with, with more space in my brain, more space in my chest and e easily to breathe. So I am just, yeah, happy uh for myself um in in this one and also see the potential i still have my glasses on i don't have that side effect um, um 
as Anna was mentioned, but but I'm happy with the result. That's excellent. Thank you so much for sharing that. Like we know uh, our model actually predicts this is how it's meant to work, but it's still unbelievable hearing each of the individual yeah, it's, stories. It's, so right? it's like, so seriously, amazing. how could that happen just so quickly? Yeah. Uh, it's incredible. So thanks for sharing that because the, I guess what we're trying to get across here is, you know, it's one thing for us to kind of talk about theoretically what's meant to happen, but it's only when you see the real life stories that, that it, um, <clears throat> it's really tangible uh, that we really are seeing such amazing results uh, with his approach. Yeah. Uh, so just one more slide from me, just to say, so where to from here? Um, so with the next step will be to actually continue on with the, the safety and efficacy testing. Um, so we're kind of in the middle of that, uh, but that's all progressing really well. Uh, then uh, we believe with this, this TBI process, as we've seen from the, the couple of stories you've heard today is working so well, just as we were hoping it was gonna work, uh, that we're in, on track to, to launch uh, some physical clinics uh, uh, that'll include our psychomenology uh, TBI uh, process. Uh, as um, Anna shared around, you know, sometimes there's a need for some medical assistance uh, before and after to check and see is it TBI or is it something else that might be contributing to, to the symptoms. So we will be looking for, uh, for MDs who'd want to um, uh, help us with the pre and post uh, treatment um, assessments to make sure that, uh, uh, that it's doing what uh, we believe it's going to do. And from a research perspective, we're really keen to um, hear from anyone that would be interested in researching this to independently demonstrate uh, that uh, the effectiveness of our treatments is, is working really well. So happy to hear from anyone in that space. Uh, so any questions? So I did see there was at least one there. Uh, so Ulu was asking, now, do we have any experience uh, from the testing so far of a TPI that's caused from chemical poison? Uh, so we haven't, uh, uh, I'm not aware of any of our research clients uh, that we've done for efficacy testing, including that. Uh, so there's a number of things. Uh, at the moment, we've just focused on people who've had a head knock. Um, and, but there's other, you know, it does raise the, the question around are there other things that uh, this process might, are the brain injuries that this might actually help with? So obviously stroke would be the first thing that kind of comes to mind. We don't know the answer to that, but that's something in the future uh, that would um, definitely like to, uh, to test. In fact, I think we're uh, trying to line that up very um, soon. Uh, so in uh, any infections, so something like encephalitis um, and you know, cerebral palsy. So all these kind of things are, uh, things that in the future we hope um, to check and see whether it's possible that the, our TBI um, treatment for those might make a difference as well. Yeah, so uh, Tanya's asking, as the process can help uh, traumatic brain injury uh, of the brain, have there been any ex experiments to work on brain injury that happened during birth uh, or that are considered genetic? So if it's actually genetic, um, then this process is not going to work. Uh, so what we're actually doing, uh, this is my understanding, and happy if uh, others on the panel who have got a much better medical knowledge than this um, than I do, but our process with the trauma release techniques that we're doing are actually addressing epigenetic um, issues, so the expression of the genes. Uh, and we're using that as a way to actually then uh, make us immune to the, um, the pathogen that's actually causing the issue. Uh, so, you know, we're getting rid of the fungus that's kind of blocking our brains from repairing. So as far as genetic disorders, no, I don't believe it'll help with that. But the brain injuries that were um, caused uh, during birth, then yes, uh, it definitely could um, help with that. That, that would, in our, um, our model of uh, experiencing some kind of um, force to the head that, that's caused that, um, our belief, our model would suggest that yes, that it should work but we uh, are not sure that we've done testing on that yet. It's a little bit harder to monitor the effectiveness in that kind of case because 
what we're looking, so one of the things we do is what we call pay for results. And so we get uh, a measure, an agreed success measure uh, before we actually work with the clients up front. And so when it comes to TBI, what you're looking to do is get them back to where they were before the TBI. Uh, so, you know, what was your, um, you know, cognitive uh, functioning before the TBI? What is it now? We're going to aim to get it back to there. Uh, you know, were you, how often were you experiencing headaches before and the severity of them? You know, it's got a lot worse now. We want to get back to where it was before. So it's a lot easier to determine whether it's due to a TBI. So, so they'd be a little bit more kind of experimental, I guess, um, in that we wouldn't know for sure that's the cause. Uh, but uh, if they've tried other things, then that's definitely one of the things we could potentially try to see what symptoms that would come back. But our, our pay for results agreement might be a little bit more challenging there because we wouldn't know for sure which ones were due to a TBI. I think we might stop there with the questions and some of the others I'll actually do a written response to or we might actually ask them uh, during the panel discussion. So thanks so much for joining us live. Really appreciate you sharing your story uh, with us and we'll get ready for the, uh, the next presentation. Thanks everyone. Thank you for watching. For more information, please visit the website www.peakstates.com.